Hello and welcome uh, to the next episode of PHP Release Radar. It's the first one in 2023, so Happy New Year. And today with Sebastian Bergmann, uh, the creator of PHP Unit. And uh, welcome, Sebastian. Hello, good evening. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you because you released PHP Unit 10. So that's the topic we are going to talk about today and about uh, PHP Unit itself. And uh, originally we we had this session already scheduled for, uh, I guess, 2021. And luckily you- That reached, sounds about right. Yeah, you reached out to us again uh, that now the release is coming and we are really happy that the release is there and we have the opportunity to talk to you. And of course, um, also people joining us in the YouTube live stream have the opportunity to ask questions. So if you have a question uh, to uh, Sebastian about PHP unit and the work uh, that the team and he is doing about it, uh, just, just put it in the chat and uh, we're going to ask. So, um, before we before we head to PHP Unit, Sebastian, you, you are one of the most famous um, faces in the PHP community, I would say, and the the one reason is you are around for a while, right? Uh, since PHP Unit uh, per, uh, number one, there is quite quite some time went by, and uh, which which PHP version did you start with? That is a very polite way of saying that I'm old. Thank you for being so polite. Uh, so my, the first version of PHP that I used, that must have been PHP 3.0 something. It was already in into the tens of PHP 3, like 014 or 015 or something like that. And and was it back then already when you thought, well, how, how do I write tests for my PHP application or, or did they still go? Time by. Uh, that is probably one or two, one or two more years in, uh, until I started thinking about testing. Mm -hmm. So I, I got into PHP by accident, uh, if you if you if you want to phrase that in a funny way. So when it comes to programming, I grew up or or was socialized. Take your pick in the terminology uh, in the Amiga demo scene. So mm -hmm. I had an Amiga, I did uh, assembly and C real time graphics coding, graphics effects, 2D, 3D graphics. Um, and I knew a couple of people in the scene with, with, uh, with whom I collaborated. And then during the time between high school is over and Back then, the military re replacement service, the civil service uh, in Germany and university starts. I, I was contacted by someone who was doing graphics and said, hey, I'm now doing things on this internet thing. Have you heard about this? <laughs> uh, I'm doing websites. Uh, do you know that? And un until now, I have only done static sites using Microsoft front page and or Dreamweaver or something like that. Um, but now I have a customer and they want something dynamic, like an e-commerce thing, and I have no clue about this, but you are a programmer, you sh surely have to know how to do this. And I asked him, sure, I can look into this, but um, what are the programming languages? So I had no idea about internet at the time, right? Um, at least with regards to how, it's, how it works, I was already uh, on the internet using dial up with a 50k6 modem from my Amiga uh, in the 1990s. Um, but I had no idea about websites. And uh, he said, well, you can choose between Perl and PHP. I looked at Perl for a couple of hours and then decided we are not going uh, to go along. We are not becoming friends. So I looked at PHP and that sort of stuck with me. Um, that uh, I was able to do what he wanted um, within a week and more or less learning the things that I need in PHP and to implement what he needed. And then forgot about it because um, university started and then I came back to it and then I got more interested in that and, and got involved in the community, go subscribed to the mailing list, asked uh, questions, got some answers 
got into answering other people's questions, got involved uh, in the documentation for PHP, and at some point started to contribute to PHP itself. This was around the time that PHP 4 had finally been released and people were looking forward to what PHP 5 might entail. There were a couple of discussions going on and I was in university in a working group where a lot of research happened with regards to object-oriented programming uh, and we'll get back to that working group later uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, and I got some ideas there that I bounced back and forth with other people working on PHP and that inspired to some extent the Reflection API and mm -hmm. um, the magic methods as most of the people uh, call them. I would call them interceptors because that's what they're called in, in other languages. Um, this is a concept that was, that was introduced in the late 70s in Smalltalk. Uh, where you could implement a method named method message not understood. So when you send the message to an object that mm -hmm. had no method implementation, then this would be the fallback. And that is what inspired underscore underscore call and get and set mm -hmm. uh, and, and so on. In hindsight, I would have shut up, up about this and would not have proposed to implement this because I have over the years, I have seen so many bad applications of that. Um, but I only had really good ideas for it in mind. And yeah, in hindsight, uh, it's, it's always easy to tell what's the right decision and what's the wrong decision. Yeah. So that's, that's how I got involved, uh, in the project. That's how I got to work on my fourth, on my first two open source projects. Um, you have to remember at that time. There was no GitHub. There was not even Git. Mm -hmm. There was not even Subversion. So it was. Um, it was CVS for mm -hmm. version control, which was a big upgrade for me because the first version control system that I have ever used was RCS, which is the predecessor to CVS, which has no, had no networking capability. It was local system only, which was good enough for me because I was the only coder in the teams in the scene that I worked on. And I used RCS locally on my Amiga to manage my C and AREX and assembly source code files. And then finally CVS came along on, uh, on my first non-Amiga machine and I was able to, yeah, I was about to say push commits somewhere, but that's, that would be completely wrong because that's not how CVS operated. But I was able to exchange using version control um, updates and changes, patches with other people. And so I started my first two open source projects on SourceForge, which mm -hmm. at the time was not a site where you got malware or other bad stuff, which I'm told is what you get there these days. I haven't been to the site in quite a while. <laughs> Um, and the first open source project what, that I started was called PHPOP3, which was a pure implementation just in PHP of the POP3 email protocol. Ah, okay. Because I needed that for a project of mine um, where the PHP on the web server was very limited. There was not an extension to talk to mm -hmm. POP3, so I implemented the protocol myself, of course, without tests. Um, but it worked for my use cases and I only implemented the use cases that I needed. And then I started to work on PHP Open Tracker, which was a website analytics solution. Mm -hmm. I, I was only interested in finding an interesting data or a nice data structure to hold the data and write the code to efficiently put the data from the request into that structure. I never implemented any analytics myself, but people picked that up and built their own web-based dashboards uh, mm -hmm. on top of that. And that was also the first time that I, that I um, experienced people giving back to open source. At the time I had an Amazon wish list where I could not be fast enough to put new items on because web agencies uh, from all around the world wanted to say thank you and buy me like a paperback book or a CD or whatever to say thank you. For the tracker too. So, so that was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that sounds, 
that sounds fair and nice. And so, was was PHP Unit your, your third open source project? Yes. Okay. So how how did that? The, the, the third open source project that I started, um, yeah. because I was already contributing to PHP and some other projects mm -hmm. at the time, but that was the third that I started. Yes. And how how did it uh, how did it start actually? How did it start? Well, uh, I already mentioned that that working group mm -hmm. uh, at the university where I was studying computer science, and I had one professor um, who exposed us students really early to the ideas of unit testing and test automation and test-driven development because he was in contact with all kinds of people um, from all around the world and some of them visited the university to give guest lectures. Uh, so I got a guest lecture, for instance, uh, by Adrian Keuler, if I remember correctly, and Jutta Eckstein and some others came and shared their ideas. And this idea of testing your software in an automated fashion, that somehow resonated with me. I found that interesting and intriguing, and I wanted to have that not only for um, the homework assignments that I got at the university in Java, where I was using uh, the, the earliest versions of, of JUnit, I wanted to have that for PHP. Mm -hmm. And one day my professor said, well, can I now convert you, not to the dark side, but can I now convert you to, to being enthusiastic about Java? Because I know that you are involved in PHP and I find open source interesting and that is great, but don't you think that uh, you should switch to Java because there are tools like JUnit exist? <laughs> And I said, well, just because it, something like JUnit does not exist for PHP does not mean it cannot be implemented, right? Um, I mean, JUnit was not invented, or the concept of unit tests was not invented in the Java world to begin with. JUnit is the third port, uh, depending on how you, or the second port, depending on how you count uh, the ports. The history is a bit mushy on there. Um, so it started with SUnit for Smalltalk. And then famously, uh, Erich Gammer and Kent Beck shared, sat next to each other on the flight from Zurich uh, to, to Atlanta and built the first version of JUnit together, pair programming on the plane. Um, and around the same time as JUnit came out, um, CPP unit came out. Mm -hmm. And I tried to implement one weekend what, how would PHP unit look like? What would the port of JUnit to PHP look like? And I managed to do it in PHP 4, but what it looked like was really ugly because I tried to keep it as close to JUnit as possible. So I basically did a line by line port of the, at that point in time, uh, latest version of JUnit. But at the core of JUnit is a design decision that is a no-no in every other uh, software that you write, that you use exceptions for control flow. But from if you think about it in terms of testing being your domain and tests should pass all the time, it makes sense to encapsulate the failing of a test as something that is exceptional. So you can make the case to use exceptions for that. And at the time I had PHP 4 and PHP 4 did not have exceptions. So I needed to find a way to emulate exceptions and that was really ugly and was not pretty to look at, but it worked. And that is how PHP unit got started. And it would probably take somewhere between a year and a half and two years until I shared that with somebody. I was I was working on this by myself. I did not share it with any, I, I talked to some people about it. There was not really any interest in that. Yeah, that's a neat idea, but mm -hmm. but this is PHP, it's only websites. Uh, why, why do we need to test something that there is no logic, uh, there is no value? Um, yeah, it's a neat idea, but nobody needs that. Um, 
but then I noticed that I'm, I was doing some small project work um, as a freelancer uh, when I, uh, in, 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 in the breaks between semesters at, at university. And I was doing more and more what you would call business logic. And for that business logic, I wanted to, to uh, have tests. So at some point I might said, okay, uh, I am using this. Uh, I need to publish this. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, at that time, there was no GitHub. So I wanted to put it on SourceForge. Mm -hmm. However, um, SourceForge works or worked uh, completely different with creating projects than GitHub. In, on GitHub, every project is namespaced in the user. Yeah, like you could go to github.com slash Sebastian Bergman slash PHP unit, and that is the PHP project, PHP unit project in my namespace. But somebody else can register their own foobar bass username on GitHub and can create a PHP unit project there. On SourceForge, project names are unique, or at least were unique at the time. I, I do not know if they if they have changed that. And there was already a project named PHP unit. And in fact, it was supposed to be a port of JUnit to PHP. However, I was not able uh, to run that. I was not able to get it to work. I tried to contact the maintainer. Hey, I have, I, I, it doesn't work. Uh, I see from the commit history that you haven't worked on this in quite a while. Can I take this over because I have something that works and never heard back? And then I did something that in hindsight, appears to be or can be looked at as a very clever marketing trick by this Sebastian person, but I honestly did not think about it in those terms or in that those contexts at the time. I just wanted to have version control for my project. So I could not put it on SourceForge, at least not under the, under the PHP unit name. And that was the only name that made sense to me. So since I had write access to everything on cvs.php.net, I just put it there. Not thinking about the fact that somebody might think, oh, this thing called PHP unit is hosted on cvs.php.net. This must be the official mm -hmm. Yes. testing framework provided by the PHP project. This was in the very early days of um, the pair project. So the PHP unit was one of the first projects under the pair umbrella. And later it became much later, it became mandatory for a pair package to have PHP unit tests, but it was not until what you probably can refer to as the first generation of PHP frameworks that came out um, around the time PHP 5.3 was released, like Symfony 1, which did not use PHP unit because Fabian had not heard about PHP unit and he wrote his own test mm -hmm. framework for Symfony 1, which he then replaced by, P, uh, by PHP unit for Symfony 2. Um, Symfony 1 put a focus on testing, as did Zen Framework 1 and some other frameworks that came out at the time. And then suddenly there was an interest in the community um, to talk about testing, to hear about testing, to start with testing. Okay. So, so basically, you started with PHP first and had the first contact with open source. Then at times of university, your professor tried to convert you to a Java developer, mm -hmm. but you stick stick to PHP, but you brought the testing to it. So yep. And um, I know from, from and if you had told me like twenty three years ago when I wrote the first lines of PHP unit, if you would have told me twenty three years ago that I would be still thinking about this topic and mm -hmm. spend as much time as I do on this. I would have said you are crazy because for me, this was something that was interesting at the time. And I want, I, 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 
like you always say in open source, you do it because you want to scratch an itch that you have. Others call it pain driven development. Yeah, mm -hmm. I felt the pain of not having a testing tool. So I did something to go make the pain go away. But I did not think that I would have to work on this for so long. But but the, the choice you made back then to bring unit testing to PHP, that that was more like a career choice for you as well, right? Because it was I, I didn't realize it at the time, but in sure. hindsight, yes. Yeah. And um, nowadays, um, when we talk about open source, it's always it, it's not for it is for free to use, but it still costs money to develop, right? It costs time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but when we when we talk about your daily life, it's more or less you mm -hmm. have to decide if you invest your time into earning money or if you invest your time mm -hmm. into PHP unit. Yeah, as as Larry Garfield nicely put it, GitHub stars don't put food on the table. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and is is there is there also maybe a point in time when you realize, okay, I need to grow a business around PHP Unit, or I need to grow a business that can cross uh, mm -hmm. cross finance PHP Unit? Is it is there a certain moment like maybe Symphony Two and then use PHP Unit where you try to say, well, I need to. So, so I think I did the first PHP unit training at some point in 2002, 2003, like late, late early 2002, on. early 2003, mm -hmm. around that time. And, and that was already when you realized, okay, okay, it's not only a project, it's also a way to earn money. That, that's, that's when I started to think, yeah, this, this could become a career, if you will. I, I was still at university, I was still not done with my studies. And I didn't know how to operate as a business. I mean, I, I, I was a student, I did not have a company. Uh, I did not know how to write an invoice. Um, so the first time I, I, I did the PHP unit training, we handled the payment via the Amazon wish list. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. I, I, I actually <laughs> told the company here is my Amazon wish list. There is a lot of stuff on there. Buy as much as you want. What you because I I didn't know what yeah. price tag to put on yeah, sure. one day of yeah. uh, of training. Not sure if that's legal, but but anyway, so it, it's a long time ago. So um, it's long time ago, yes. Um, but just just to take it or uh, say it bluntly, there are way easier ways to earn money than doing open source, right? And and where their point in your where yeah, you thought there are certainly easier ways with regards to um, I I do not want to to use the term mental problems or mental health issues because I do not really think that I'm affected by that and I knew no know too many people who are actually affected by that so I do not want to use the term for me but it's sometimes it's uh, stressful. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly less stressful ways to earn money. I mean, I would not have thought that I would ever have to deal with the authorities to um, tell them that there was a distributed denial of service attack against the PHP unit infrastructure, mm -hmm. that there was uh, threats uh, against me and other contributors and so on. And all of this happened last year because PHP unit is one of the open source or was one of the open source projects who put a stand with Ukraine um, message into the command line output. And the DDoS attack on PHP unit is still going on with a couple of dozen terabytes per week. Oh, wow. That unfortunately I no longer have to, to think about in terms of, oh my God, I need to keep phpunit.de running. Um, thanks to Cloudflare who 
immediately reacted to us telling on, on Twitter, hey, we have this attack going on. Here is how we tried to mitigate it with some easy things that we were able to do on the server side. And they said, well, it's it, PHP unit is a critical piece of software, not only for us, but for, uh, for the entire world out there. Um, here is an email address, send an email there, and we, we, we promise that within an hour you uh, have the problem solved. Oh, wow. It took a little bit longer than <laughs> one hour, but definitely within a day we were, we were fine. And now uh, the server is really idling along okay. with a couple of hundred kilobytes of traffic per day and not the amount of stuff that it's actually hitting. That's great news. Yeah. Um, so, but eventually one day you founded the PHP CC, right? So is it, is it mm -hmm. a company that is kind of equivalent to the company running PHP unit or how, how does it relate to each other? So the company has nothing to do with PHP unit or the PHP, mm -hmm. PHP unit project, at least not yeah, officially, legally, whatever. Um, all three of us who founded the company and who run the company, of course, use PHP unit. All of us contribute to PHP unit. I mean, I, I am the maintainer and the creator and I do, if you look at the commits, I still do most of the work, although I'm working hard on making it easier for other people um, to contribute and there's quite some success to that. Um, but, uh, and, and Arne, for instance, is one of the major contributors now. He's one of the two people who um, did most of the work on the new event system for PHP Unit 10. But it was Stefan, my other partner, who sparked the idea for the event system. Mm -hmm. And this is where we talk about the delay, I guess, um, because this started at, um, at an event hosted by the European Commission, because the European Commission not only recognized that Symfony is an important piece of infrastructure and open source that they use, but also PHP unit. So they invited us and also PHP Stan uh, to, um, to, to a meeting in, in October 2019. And that's where we started to work on the event system. And then I do not know what, but something happened uh, early 2020 that turned our lives uh, <laughs> upside down. And for a while, I was not able to work on open source. Some other people were not able to work on open source. And then PHP 8 came out and we needed to do more adaptations for that. And once we did the event system, we realized, oh, there are some other things that we can clean up, but we'll get to that later, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so coming back to your question, sorry for derailing. Um, <laughs> no, the company does not have any control or influence on the project. But of course, all three of us are working on the project in, in, in some capacity or not. But it's not um, a product, an open source product of our company. No. But we offer, of course, services around it, like training and consulting and something like testing is a is such a cross-cutting concern that it comes up in almost all of our consulting even if testing is not the primary focus of that engagement yeah, yeah it makes sense especially if you if you have applications with a lot of business logic in it and uh, want to mm -hmm. make sure um so last question before we head into a small quiz um there is something called php unit code sprints, right? Is it, is it yeah, way yeah, at least there used to be. It used to be before that little I, I, thing. I really mentioned. hope that this, that we can bring this back at some point. And is it where um, you gather your core team or just, just, is it the three of so, you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the first code sprints or the, when the first PHP unit code sprints took place, there was not really a core team. It was just me. Yeah, or if if and if you ask Alberto Brandolini, um, he once wrote a really interesting article where he talked about the dungeon master. 
yeah if you if you have a project that is going on for a really long time you you always have this one person who knows everything and mm -hmm. Because this person is responsible for most of the code and only they understand it. And it's really hard to onboard new developers because you need to get the knowledge out of that one person's brain into other brains uh, while at the same time making it easier to understand the code by cleaning it up. And then you have a, a circular dependency because at, at the beginning, only the dungeon master is able to do the cleanup work because only they understand what this code is supposed to do. So for quite some time, my primary focus was reduce technical debt in PHP unit and make it easier to contribute, make the code easier to understand. And I guess everybody who has a code base that is 10 plus years old knows that there is code in there that they're not proud of, um, that there are probably features in there that are no longer used or that are no longer needed. And every line of code that you have is a liability. It's a liability in, in production environment code because it's, it's a potential security risk. It's... Um, it's a liability because it's just one more line of code that needs to be taken in consideration if you make a change. It's one more line of code that somebody needs to teach someone about, probably when you onboard a new person. So removing code, reducing the amount of code, cutting away features that are no longer relevant, uh, removing support for edgy, edgy edge cases, um, and rewriting some parts that are just not understandable um, and sometimes not even to me understandable anymore. Like, why the hell did I ever write that? And then after one hour of looking at the history of the project, ah, yeah, back like 12 years ago, there was this weird bug and that's why I made this. And then two years later, I made that change. Uh, now it makes sense. So we need to get rid of that so that it's easier for others to, to contribute. And that was the idea that um, started PHP Unit Code Sprints because over the years, a couple of people expressed interest. Hey, I really want to give back to the project. I want to contribute. I want to help fix bugs. I want to help with the documentation. I want to um, learn how to implement a specific feature. Um, but I do not know how to get started. And I was confronted with two choices, basically. Well, three choices if you consider sorry i cannot help you at all a choice i didn't so i leave that out so i had two choices either i can spend a really 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 long time writing everything down that i have in my brain which um i don't think works and the alternative would be hey if you're interested let's meet for two or three days and spend some time together and I show you how to fix certain things, how to work on certain things, and then you can start working on things. And while you're doing that, you can ask me questions. I'm in the room, I go around, I sit next to you, whatever. And surprisingly, and was really happy about that, there was from the very beginning much interest in that. And I was able to find um, companies that wanted to sponsor this, like that um, hosted the event that gave us the room where we could have that and sponsored uh, food and drinks and so on, the things that you need. And that worked quite well. And then the pandemic came. Yes. And uh, I do not really feel comfortable yet of hosting such an event again. Mm -hmm. I hope to bring this back next year at the latest. I do not know whether we can make it work this year, but hopefully next year. What I did have um, was I, I, uh, last fall, I had a mini code sprint 
with um, what I would now nowadays refer to as my core team, which is Andreas Möller and Arne Blankert, who contributed most of the work for the event system for PHP in a 10. I invited them um, to my home and we spent two and a half days in my living room doing mop pro programming on the big TV screen. That's where we finished working on the event system and finished integrating um, everything in PHP unit that needs to know about the event system with the event system and basically made sure that within a couple of months, we would be able to release PHP unit 10. And I'm looking forward to having them at my place again next month, where we want to work on some new features and functionality that will make it into PHP unit 10 minor versions um, later this year. All right, so um, we are looking forward to that. And maybe, maybe it's even a public event. I think then the room at uh, your place is potentially too small, but um, I just saw- No, I, I can only host those two people, sorry. Yeah, I, I can't imagine, I can imagine. Um, I, I noticed one thing is different since the last time we did PHP release radar, and it's that mm -hmm. Google Meet without a business account has a time limit. <laughs> oh. This is why we need to take a very short break. Um, Sebastian and Dennis, to you. In the Google Doc that we use to prepare this uh, one is a second meeting, and I'd say we meet there again in a couple of seconds. We switch over. Yes. Good idea. Okay. See right. you. See you in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we're still on, Dennis. We are still on. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, all right. We're still live. We still hear the audio. I hope so. Let's see. I can see an image, but it's not the current stream. But it might be my screen so, again. So I guess we're back. That's that's the issue when you deal with uh, when you deal with players like Google, I guess. So let's see. Um, I do have an issue still when sharing. Let's try to. Sound of there, but no video. I can see the same issue. Um, uh, I'm going to fix that in a second. All right. So, um, let's hope, let's hope everything is back on now. And then let's start yeah. right away with the so, Big assertion, Chris. I'm scared. No, don't be scared. <laughs> you said there are a lot of lines of code that you wrote, and actually there is a base class of the test case called assert, and it has, I think, 124 public static functions called, starting with assert, and the quiz is about a bit of that. Dennis. And before exactly. we get started, sorry for interrupting you, but do you want to hear, hear something really scary? Um, I, I've seen a couple of times over the years people use PHP unit framework assert in production code. But, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I can mean... imagine that you saw a lot of weird stuff. And yeah, let's see if we also saw one of those methods in the production code as well. So these are some of the assertions. Some exist, some do not, some do not anymore. So that's why I said updated for PHP unit 10. Um, and to be fair, there are like hundreds of them. So 
we see if you know them. Do you know if assert none does exist? I do not. <laughs> I do not know whether that exists or not. It actually does. Um, I remember okay. last time when we looked it up, I, I, I didn't know either. So this one, assert array subset. That caused so much psychological stress that I remember that it existed, but I burned it with fire. <laughs> do, because... do you know which version? No. No. And the reasons why I burned it with fire and nuked it from orbit are laid out in the ticket, uh, and I never ever want to touch that again. It was actually PHP that ate, and I remember there were people actually creating just a certain array subset as a kind of PHP unit extension because they still wanted to have it. Um, so yeah, and that I, is I the remember that vividly. <laughs> and that is the beauty of open source. If the code did exactly what you wanted, perfect. Take it, use it in your application or in your project. Um, but the, the, the problem that I have to deal with in that, that this particular case is, um, sorry, you triggered me. You triggered my, my psychological problems with a third area subset. Um, the thing that I have to deal with is that there are hundreds of people out there and each of them have a different idea what the right behavior for this is. And it's not the same. <laughs> and yeah, at Sorry. least now it's gone and it's not your problem anymore. So but how about wait, this wait one? A second. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I will I go just, back. I just wanted to... Um... You mentioned you can create an open source package and still use it. And I know that there are already some trades for PHP 10 compatibility, uh, bring in legacy stuff. But um, there are a couple of um, open source projects wrapping PHP unit, like Infection and um, Power Test. And uh, Bruno Bandera uh, in the chat asks uh, how uh, are your thoughts about past PHP? So what, maybe those kind of projects. Mm -hmm. um, I have looked at PEST. I have talked to the developers of PEST, uh, especially leading up uh, to the PHP Unit 10 release because they, they are wrapping PHP Unit. They are building on top of PHP Unit and they were one of the projects where I wanted to make sure that they are aware as early as possible about the changes that are coming. Um, and it's actually Nuno who that uh, came back to me like one and a half years ago when we had the initial version of the event system working, but we're not using it ourselves in PHP unit yet. That, that's what, what took so long. Uh, he said, well, Within a couple of hours, uh, I was able to migrate PEST to the event system, and it was an amazing experience. Can't wait for that to, to be released as stable. So we, 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 we communicate. Uh, we do not hate each other. That's, that may be surprising to some people out there. I, I, I have memories of, for instance, I think it was at a PHP conference in, in Paris a couple of years ago couple of years before the pandemic uh, <laughs> that I was there and, and talking to Kieran McNulty and or Konstantin Kudryashov and people walked by and one and looked at us in a weird way and one person stopped uh, you talk to each other <laughs> and we were like yeah why wouldn't we but but you hate each other one of you works on PHP unit, the other works on BHAT and PHP spec. No, we do not hate each other. We, we talk to each other, we, we exchange ideas, we collaborate on certain things. Uh, this may be surprising to you, but we do not hate each other. Yes, there are some people on, on Twitter or Stack Overflow or wherever that are users of our respective things and they hate each other, but that doesn't mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. What do I think about PEST? Um, well, something like a test framework, like anything that you use or that you create, um, 
comes with opinions, right? And PHP unit, of course, encapsulates slash implements slash propagates opinions that I have, but that does not mean that my opinions are the only valid ones. Uh, it's not exclusive. And what I care about is that people test because software runs the world and the less buggy software out there there is, the better. And if you test using PEST or if you test using PHP unit or any other of the nowadays many test frameworks of PHP out there, that's great. And I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm upset if I see some, uh, not really <laughs> upset, but uh, I, I feel bad when I see something that is not tested because the longer you wait with testing, the harder it gets to test it afterwards. Yes. And if there is something in PEST or anything like PEST, like there are many extensions, or there used to be many extensions for PHP unit in the past. Now, now it's easier to implement those things with PHP unit 10 that customized PHP units output. The output of PHP unit is the way I like it or the way nowadays that the people that work on PHP unit like it. And if you do not like that, you can either customize it or use something like PEST that has a different output out of the box. Mm -hmm. Use what makes you happy. Use what works for you. Yeah, that's 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 a really very good point. And I was really happy um, that within one or two days, the major things that wrap the PHP unit test runner to do their job um, had releases with PHP unit 10 compatibility. Infection, uh, PEST is waiting for, for something other in the Laravel ecosystem. So they have not released PEST 2 yet, but Codeception is compatible with PHP Unit 10, uh, Infection, Para Test, Para Unit, and that, that, that's, um, that made me very happy because I was worried that it would be too hard for those people or take too long and would cause too much friction, but apparently it worked. That, that's nice to hear. I, I, I'm looking forward to, to upgrading my project to, to PHP unit 10 soon. And I think that's uh, snapshot assertions is one of those extensions. And I, I figured, oh, they're not ready yet. I, I want to contribute that. And they, they even already had that in place. So I think that that works really well in the PHP unit ecosystem that people jump on that wagon really early on because PHP unit is just so important. But let's continue with the quiz. So um, this one, assert JSON string equals JSON file. Does this one exist? For a change, I would say no. Um, oh wait, now I have to look it up. I think it does. Oh no, I jumped back. That was it. It actually does. Okay, then now we know. I, I, I wasn't sure because I also found this one. Assert string equals string ignoring line endings. Does this one exist? I think that exists. It does. It's new in PHP unit 10, and I just liked it yeah. because the name is exceeding yeah. length, but that's really nice. Yeah, but I can give you a little bit of background why that name is so long. Um, I have been burned by really bad API decisions over the years in PHP unit. Yeah, the most prominent example being the initial original get mock method that was the first ever entry point into PHP unit's test double system. At the beginning, get mock had like two parameters. And over the years, that length of the parameter list grew into the two digits. And all of them were optional. But the most commonly used one was like at the very end. 
and that was just horrible API design. And we also had a couple of assertions that take optional parameters to customize, for instance, how strings are supposed to be compared. And I just, just think that an explicit name for the method without optional parameters that may be confusing, that may even lead to illegal combinations of values for that for those parameters, um, is better. Yes, the name is long, and but you do not have to type it. You have an IDE. Um, and I think it's much clearer. It, it is, and I, j just so we can wrap up the, the uh, t um, so, that sorry, the used to exist, but I think I renamed that to assert matches regular expression or something. Along exactly, that, that's why I put those together. I think this really shows nicely that it actually it's it, having this longer name makes it really clear yeah. that it matches regular and, expression. And if I remember the history of that name correctly, um, this is the perfect example of nothing lives longer in software development than a temporary thing, right? <laughs> I wanted to implement uh, an assertion for strings based on regular expressions, and I was lazy, and I just typed assert regexp and had a to-do list item somewhere that was not really written down, but only at the back of my head to come up with a proper name for that. And then, oh, suddenly I had released it. And then over and over and over again, people said, ah, this is not really understandable. I said regex, yeah, maybe regular expression, but this, this just looks weird. Uh, and yeah, so I deprecated that name, introduced a new name, and then at some point removed the old name. But that's the continuous update to a code base like this that you just have to do. Otherwise, you and all your users go insane. And, that's... And, and to be honest, yeah. with tooling that we have today, like in PHP Storm with intents and quick fixes and with command line tools like Rector, this is really a non-issue. You do not even have to make these changes yourself. Yeah, and that's true. Um, and that let, let's skip some of those because we already had a few. Um, that, that that's a, a nice transition over to um, PHP Unit Ten and some of the changes that are coming. And we looked at a few numbers to to better visualize what you mentioned with cleaning up the code base and improving all those things. And just for an example, from PHP Unit Nine to PHP Unit Ten. Each time uh, between those major versions, there was 1,600 commits versus 5,000, uh, almost 5,000 commits now in PHP Unit 10. And you can also see that the amounts of lines of code in, in those changes almost double. That, that, that's an immense amount of change that happened there. And also, if you see the average complexity of PHP Unit, you can see that at, I think it peaked at around PHP Unit 6, and then it gradually became less and less complex. And now it, you can see what, what a big change it is at 4.67 at, at PHP Unit 10. And that, that just shows what you mentioned, the, 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 the effort. Was that actually, were these numbers something that you looked at when making those changes? Or is, is this just incidental that the complexity was reduced? And, and you focus on something else? That's quite a bit to unwrap. So of course, the goal was and still is to reduce complexity, um, be it uh, the cognitive complexity, which cannot really be measured because that's more or less a psychological thing. Like you, you look at a piece of code as a human being and either you understand it immediately or within a couple of seconds, or you don't. And if you don't, um, well, I, I've once heard the rule, if you look at a piece of code for a method, for instance, and after two or three minutes, you do not understand what the method is doing and how, delete it and write it 
from scratch. Hopefully it will be better next time. So of course that was the goal, uh, but thank you for showing those numbers because I did not really look regularly at that, but um, if you would have asked me whether this goes down or up, I would definitely have said down. I just wouldn't be, have been able to tell you how much it has gone down. Um, I looked at some other software metrics in the broadest sense. I did some visualizations at a couple of points in time uh, using the tooling that is discussed in the book Co your code as a crime scene, which I can highly recommend. It's interesting reading and some interesting tools that came out of that book and or by the author of the book. And you could see how the structure of the PHP unit code changed over time. So I, I, I already mentioned earlier that basically the development for PHP unit 10 was sparked, started, at that uh, European Commission event in, in Brussels in October 2019. And this started because we, we realized it's really tedious and cumbersome and not really nice to write something as an extension that really hooks into PHP unit. For instance, you want to write a new output implement a new way to implement a new way of how php unit reports progress on the command line how re test results are presented or if you want to implement a new logger or something like that that's really bad and at the time php unit had two mechanisms for for extending the test runner in such a way there was the really old test listener interface, which goes all the way back to the earliest versions of PHP unit. And the problem with the test listener interface on the one hand is that it grew over the years. Initially it had like two or three methods. At the end it had 10 plus methods. Um, violating the interface segregation principle, the I in solid, you should have narrow interfaces. You should have methods. Uh, you, you should have interfaces with few methods that are related to the one thing. And you really want to have many small interfaces in a situation like that, not the one big God interface that, where you maybe even have to implement only one method and you provide dummy implementations for the rest be because you just do not care about that. That's ba bad API design. And there was a slightly newer um, way of extending PHP unit, which was the test hooks interface, which was slightly better, but not really. But I learned about the fact that it was not really better too late after it was released. And why did I learn it too late? Because I didn't use it myself directly, or we didn't get to use it ourselves directly. But the really bad problem um, with the test listener interface was that it allowed you to manipulate the test. So it was not just a listener, it was too much. It gave you in your notify methods, the actual test object, which allowed a listener to change the result of a test. This is what made the Volkswagen extension for PHP unit possible that uh, was released at the height of the Dieselgate scandal. Yeah, so you had an extension suddenly for PHP unit that you get, could install. And when you ran your tests locally on, on in your development environment, the tests would fail when they were broken. And in a continuous integration environment, the tests would always be green because the extension would detect, hey, I'm on, on the CI server. So in the listener, I changed the result of each test to be successful. And obviously this defeats the purpose and intent of a listener interface. So I wanted to get rid of that for a really long time. So that was the, the situation when we started to think about how can we do this better? Uh, and we came up with the idea, hey, let's do this in an event-driven way. Everything in, when, in PHP unit should become an event. When something happens, there should be an event. 
execution of a test starts event, execution of a test finished event, assertion has failed event, uh, stop test stop mock object created event. Gives you really deep insight into what PHP is, unit is doing while it is running your test suite, which is useful on the one hand for, for debugging PHP unit itself, which is great, but also a, allows you and gives you a lot of information to implement your own logging and to really customize how PHP unit presents its information. And it's now read only. If you subscribe to an event like that, we have a couple of dozen different events right now. Um, if you subscribe to an event, the event objects and everything they aggregate um, are immutable read-only value objects. So you cannot manipulate anything anymore. And we did not make the same mistake that I did a couple of years ago when I introduced the test hook interfaces. We did not release this or we decided very early we are not going to release a new version of PHP unit that just has the event system, but PHP unit does not use it itself. We only release this when we migrated or everything related to output on the console and related to writing to log files, JUnit, XML log file, Team City, um, whatever. Only if we manage to migrate all of that to the new event system, yeah, eat your own dog food. We do not release the event system until we have proven that it at least solves PHP units own use cases. And that took us longer than we had anticipated. And here is why it took us longer. Because once we had the event system and once we had started to use the event system for our own purposes inside PHP unit, we realized, oh, suddenly we can make a lot of other code a lot easier and easier to understand. And the first thing that triggered that was we wanted to have an event in our event system for PHP unit finished configura configuring itself. So PHP unit has a default configuration and then you can load the configuration from an XML configuration file that is layered on top of the default configuration. And then you can have options on the command line which are layered on top of that. But until PHP unit 10, there was not the configuration. There was, there was not the central represent or the, the canonical representation of the configuration in PHP unit that was scattered throughout the code of the test runner. And some of the putting CLI options over XML over default happened here. Some happened over there. Some happened over there. Basically it grew wild over the years. But there was not the canonical place where all of this needs to happen. But we needed it. We needed an immutable value object that contains the complete final configuration because we wanted to emit that as part of the event. Hey, we finished configuring. Then we started to clean up all that configuration code. And that configuration code is now in a place where I think people other than me and other than the people who have most recently worked on can understand it. Because now it's very clear. Here's a piece of code that reads an XML configuration file. Here is a piece of code that parses the CLI options. And here is a piece of code, uh, here is a piece of code named uh, configuration merger which merges the default configuration and the XML configuration and the CLI options. And after that, you have an immutable value object and all other parts of PHP unit that need to make a decision based on the configuration use that and do not use their own thing. 
that reduced a lot of codes, that reduced a lot of complexity, that made a lot of other things then possible. F suddenly we had this configuration object and then we realized, oh, we can completely rewrite these really ugly, arcane, nobody can understand it, other parts of the test runner. And once we had cleaned that up, oh, now this cleanup is possible. And it was really hard to stop, but at some point we needed to stop. And that's basically what we did last fall when we said, okay, we need to stop. Um, there will be other releases after PHP unit 10. We have now something that we are confident that we can stabilize it until February and release PHP unit 10.0. And then more cleanup will happen in the future. Do you already have plans? What do you want to clean up next? Or is, is that just that there's so many things opening up now that you just pick whatever comes along your way? So the next thing that I want to clean up, and I already started to do the first steps uh, for that in an experimental branch that I already pushed to GitHub, is rewrite the code how PHP unit finds the tests. Because that, that code is really ugly and hard to maintain and prone to errors. That's motivation uh, enough by itself. But also the concept, how I find the tests is not really the right concept. But back when I started to work on PHP unit, there was no alternative. Um, the, I only had the reflection API. There was not something like PHP parser by Nikita, which was the standard implementation in PHP of a library on how to parse and statically analyze PHP code. So I want to change finding the tests from recursively iterating over one or more directories and requiring files based on pattern matching and then use reflection API, uh, which new classes now exist since I required that file. And then, yeah, you get the idea. The two of you are smiling. This is not fun code to look at, and this is not how it should be done today. Um, and you have a lot of side effects. You wouldn't believe how many issues I had to debug over the years because people not only have a class declaration in their example test.php file that gets included. Yeah, there's code that is, that is immediately run in the global scope. There is other stuff that happens and a million things can go wrong if you just include that and then try to make sense out of it using the reflection API. So what I want to do is use PHP parser. So recursively iterate through one or more directories, open files, but not using require. So no code is executed, but instead use static analysis to find classes that match conventions used by PHP unit and find the tests. And only at that point create a value object that says, okay, I found the test in that file and here's all the information that you would need to run this test. So that at a later point in time, I can have code that goes over this information and then loads the source code for the test class for the first time that a test from the test class is run, obviously, and then instantiates the test case class object and runs the test. Right now, a lot of confusion about how PHP unit runs test comes from what I already explained, but also from what I'm going to explain right now is before PHP unit runs the first test, it creates test objects for all test methods of all test classes. And it does so including running data providers and uh, set up before class methods and whatever before even the decision has been made whether or not, not all tests are to be run. Because currently test filtering based on group attributes or um, pattern matching on method names, class names, and so on can only work on the actual test objects. 
So I have to create all of them. So people are confused. Hey, I have a setup method, setup before class method here, where I call mark test incomplete or mark test skipped, but the data provider for that method is run. What, what's with that? Yeah, that's the reason why. Um, and once I changed how we find the tests, I can change how we run the tests and that will re drastically reduce the memory footprint of PHP unit, because right now, all these objects for all of these tests stay in memory until the last test has been run. Which means that if you create really complex object graphs in your setup method, for instance, and store them in properties of the test object and don't clean them up and tear down, you get huge memory leaks. And I, that, that's the next thing that I want to tackle. I'm currently in, uh, at the point where I'm trying to cut that problem down into manageable chunks. Maybe some stepping stones of that can be implemented in 10.x releases because they are backwards compatible. Maybe some of this has to wait until the next major version because uh, I will discover necessary BC breaks along the way. And one of the things that happened very late in the development of PHP Unit 10, PHP Unit 10 very close to the release of 10.0 is that I figured out that some people do cr crazy stuff in their data provider methods like creating mock objects and register them and, and so on. And this is something that would no longer work at all in the future that I just described. So this is why I deprecated non-static data provider methods now. So you need to change your tests now. It makes them better today, in my opinion, already. Some people may disagree, but this is what makes it possible to tackle how PHP unit um, runs tests to that drastically reduce memory footprint and hopefully make it even faster. So actually you're doing something for the carbon footprint of all pipelines, right? So uh, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a refactoring that could re really help for that. Yeah, so so um, you may have already noticed that um, there are seven patch releases that have already been made for PHP Unit 10, and one of them was to fix a three-time, uh, a 300% 300 performance degradation compared to PHP Unit 9. In test suites where a lot of tests, uh, where, where a lot of assertions are made on complex object graphs. So that came about because I talked about events earlier and we also have um, two events named assertion succeeded and assertion failed that are emitted for all the assert methods, not only those funny and interesting ones that you used earlier in the quiz, but for all dozens and dozens of assertions. And I also mentioned that I own that, that we only hand out immutable value objects through the event system. So even for complex object graphs, we have to make sure that we give you something that is not the real thing. And this is an expensive op uh, operation that gets more expensive, the more complex your object graph is. And of course, there is no not not really a performance impact when we do this for an assertion failure because you shouldn't have assertion failures to begin with right uh, it should be a rare event that something um, fails but it turns out that you do not really need this exported object graph um, for the uh, assertion succeeded event because when everything goes right, you do not really care about the thing that you performed the assertion on. Uh, so I removed that. And suddenly for, for um, those developers who reported the issue and mentioned, hey, I'm affected by the same thing, 
PHP unit suddenly got three times a uh, PHP unit 10.0.n plus one was suddenly three times faster than 10.0.n, which was already great, but they also said, hey, now it's faster than PHP unit nine. I do not know where that would come from. And at this point, I do not believe that because intuitively I would assume that it would be slightly slower because there's so much more that we do now in 10 due to the, uh, due to the event system. But more than one person uh, independently from them, uh, from each other said, hey, for me, it's now faster than nine. So I can't really believe that. I didn't have the time yet to do my own benchmarks, um, but I plan to do that. and. And if it's actually faster, I want to find out why, because I cannot think of anything that would or that could explain that. But speaking of getting early feedback, um, so since people want to migrate to PHP 10 now, probably um, all the libraries we mentioned, they're starting to, to also support PHP 10. What's one of the big things that for me as a user, I should be aware of when I want to use PHP 10 and I'm currently stuck with maybe PHP 9.5 mm -hmm. or something like that. Two major changes that are both, in my opinion, big improvements. Um, one is PHP unit now supports PHP 8 attributes for putting metadata on units of code, which makes metadata for PHP unit tests much less error prone. Um, although the code for parsing annotations in doc comments was at one of the code sprints that we mentioned earlier cleaned up by Marco, it's now much better than what it used to be, but it's still ugly code because parsing annotations is just really ugly and nobody should have to do that. And since we now have proper metadata in syntax, uh, thanks to PHP attributes, nobody has to do that anymore, at least if you're using the new version. Um, it's much less code to use internally in PHP unit to understand uh, attributes, Benjamin and his uh, collaborators on that RFC and the implementation did a fabulous job implementing attributes. Um, of course, we could not just say, hey, we no longer support annotations. So we had to build a system that supports both. I'm not yet 100% decided whether or not support for annotations will stick around into the long run. Um, I currently have tickets that say annotations will be de deprecated in PHP unit 11 and they will be removed in PHP unit 12. But um, yeah, uh, I'm not yet sure whether I actually want to do that or not. Um, the work has now been done um, and what I can say is no new functionality um, will be implemented that supports new annotations. New functionality will only be implemented using attributes because I do not want to touch that annotation stuff ever again. Um, and that just makes so much, so many things related to metadata so much easier and, and more robust because now it's real syntax and now you can use the double colon, double colon class constant when you want to express that your code intends to cover a specific class. You do not need to worry with really long, fully qualified class names in code comments anymore and so on. And attributes, one big new feature that you actually see as an enhancement if you, if you migrate to 10. The other thing is not so obvious. Um, it's relate to the event system. So in the past, in P up to PHP unit nine, PHP units error handler would optionally convert notices, warnings, e strict, e deprecated, and so on uh, into exceptions to report them. But an exception aborts the execution of the test. So it may hide other things. 
And it's also really frustrating if you, for instance, configured your PHP unit to convert deprecations to exceptions and the new PHP version comes out and you upgrade to the new PHP version and suddenly everything is an error because you're hitting in a couple of places the same deprecation in PHP over and over and over again. And that is not really, or that was not really a good solution, but we didn't have the means to implement a better solution in PHP Unit 9. Now we have an event system. So now what the error handler does is it triggers an event. It triggers an event when a deprecation notice warning, whatever was triggered in PHP or in user land, E deprecated versus E user deprecated, plus some special things that are not related to the error handler um, for PHP unit itself. So PHP unit itself can trigger or can emit events for errors. You have uh, made an error in your test double configuration. You configured a return value that does not match the declared return type of a method, for instance. That's a PHP unit error. Um, you want to generate a code coverage report, but you do not have Xdebug or PCOF loaded. That's a PHP unit warning that's separate from, from the error handler thing. You're using a deprecated PHP unit feature. That is an event, yes, but it's not handled by the error handler. And we report all these things separate from each other and you can configure whether you want to be informed by them or not. The big change is that now if you are triggering a deprecate, or if now if you run production code, tested code, while a test is running, that triggers an E deprecated, for instance, the test will be run completely. Before uh, you hit you hit E deprecated exception, execution of the test is stopped. And we no longer do that. You will now get the full picture. You will may, maybe you will see the test succeeded, but it triggered three deprecations. One in PHP code and two in Symfony or another dependency that you have. I'm not happy at all with the reporting of these events yet, but the way that we collect them, the way that we separate them from each other, that I'm very happy with, but I want to change the way this is reported. And that's one of the things that I'm working on right now for PHP unit 10.1. I hope to have this done in time for 10.1 in April. Um, and that would give you like, okay, this deprecation was triggered in this one code uh, spot, code location by these 20 tests. So only reported once, right now it's reported 20 times. And that's really hard uh, to, to, to digest and to put into something that is actionable. And I want to improve this output and maybe make it even some more configurable uh, than it, it currently is. But now that we have the event system, we have this foundation that we can uh, iterate on and, and improve output. So, but those are the two major things um, that I would say are improvements that are visible to the end user, if you will of PHP unit. And the good thing is because the event system can be used from the outside as well. Maybe someone else comes up with a good idea and then you can just yeah. use it in, in PHP unit yourself. Sure. All right. Um, you already mentioned like your Amazon wish list and, and the code mm -hmm. spins for, for people to, to help out with, with PHP unit. What would you say is nowadays the best way to support you and the other PHP unit contributors to uh, keep PHP unit active and, and, and moving forward and doing all those changes you mentioned. Use PHP unit, talk about that you use PHP unit, raise the awareness. I mean, 23 years on, one would assume that everyone has at least heard about the fact that the concept like testing exists, that you can automate testing, that 
frameworks and test runners like PHP unit are available, but I still run into developers that never heard about it or have never used it. So raise awareness, talk about it, use it. Uh, yes, those are already contributions, uh, in, in my opinion. If you run into an issue, open a ticket. We try to be friendly and we try to respond in a timely fashion and we try hard to, to fix the bug. Um, if you have ideas, open a ticket as well. All of that is contribution. Um, hopefully, at some point, we have code sprints again. So that is a contribution coming to such an event or hosting such an event. Um, yeah. Other than that, of course, you can contribute financially, right? So allowing me, for instance, to organize events like Andreas and Arne at my home for three days, uh, working on PHP unit, mob programming on the couch. Uh, I used funds last year that I get from GitHub sponsors to pay for the travel expenses for Arne and Andreas and to uh, give them some nice uh, homemade food uh, so they don't starve while they work on PHP unit. And I'll do exactly the same next month. Um, yeah, you can support me, my work on open source on GitHub. That's one way of doing it. GitHub sponsors. Um, I'm, I, I, it feels better to me if that's a corporate sponsor that gives me the money compared to individual, individual, uh, individual developers. Of course, I'm thankful for every donation that I get. Uh, especially the small amounts that I get from individual developers. But somehow, to me, it feels wrong to get the funding from so many individual developers. I would rather think, uh, I would rather get that um, from, from big companies that, that build their value based on open source projects like PHP or like PHP unit. But that is a, yeah, a societal slash political issue. Um, that I've also talked to the European Commission about, that I talked to some other politicians about. Um, I'm also active, for instance, in the Ar in German word Arbeitskreis Open Source, the Gesellschaft für Informatik, the working group for open source in the German uh, Computer Science uh, Association, which only recently, like last year, found out that the topic open source exists and uh, that maybe as an association for computer scientists, this is a topic that should be discussed. Um, and I got invited there and helped that some people there understand what open source is about and um, how, for instance, open source can be used in research and education and also with regards to funding and political activities. Ma I do not have high hopes uh, for that, but um, I think it's a society issue and um, we need to, to work on that. Uh, if you are a corporation and if you do not, and if you are a corporation and if you want to support the PHP unit project financially, but GitHub sponsors does not work for you, you can contact me directly and we figure something out. Um, PHP unit, PHP Unit's website has a page for sponsors and those are sponsors that contacted me directly and they, they get the added benefit of having their logo on the PHP Unit website and are allowed to use, are allowed to use PHP Unit's logo on their website to advertise that they support uh, PHP Unit. So that is one way of doing this. Then relatively new, there is this platform called Tightlift where they analyze your company's software supply chain, not for security issues, but to figure out what open source are you using. And they suggest to you as a company, this is the amount of money that we think you should give back. And then they distribute that based on some algorithm uh, to the open source projects that are used and that are listed on their website. Yeah, that's that's really an interesting approach, I guess. Um, so we we are have, uh, heading the ninety minutes uh, now. So, um, mm -hmm. w but there are still some open questions from from the chat. So with a with a, a polite request for a short answer here, 
Um, one question is, and I think it's a easy one: Do you use PHP Unit to test PHP Unit? Yes. That 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 was more or less expected, I guess. Um, the slightly longer answer is that we use regular PHP Unit tests to test the Unit testable parts of PHP Unit, of which there are more and more thanks to all the cleanup that that we have been doing. Um, PHP Unit also has a large amount of end-to-end -end tests for the test runner that are implemented using PHPT, which is the same test format that the PHP project uses to test the PHP runtime, which is basically one test per file, and that file is contains PHP code that is run into in a separate PHP process. And then there's pattern matching based on the result from the PHP process. And we have a lot of acceptance tests slash re regression tests uh, implemented in PHPT. Like take this directory, there is a PHP unit XML file, there is some test code, there's some production code. Run PHP unit as if I were in that directory using these CLI options, and then I yeah. expect to get this output. This is what we mostly use for testing PHP units output. Okay. Yeah, it makes, but well, makes absolutely sense, I guess. And uh, last question uh, for today. Um, is there something, and you mentioned already um, bits of it, is there something that is missing in PHP Unit 10 that you were aiming for bringing in, but nowadays you didn't make it until the deadline? Not really. What we wanted to have in PHP Unit 10 is in PHP Unit 10. We wanted to have the event system as the foundation for extending the test runner in the future. And that paid off. Uh, para unit, para test, pest, and others are using that and are happy with that. And it's for them, it's much better than the old system. Sure, for, the, for, for some time now, it will be painful, if you will, because you have to support both the old way of PHP Unit 9 and the new way of PHP Unit 10, because they still need to support both versions, obviously. But once they can drop um, support for the old test listener crap, uh, they'll be very happy because they only need to interact with the event system. Uh, so we wanted to have the event system in place, and we wanted to use the event system for everything related to output and logging in PHP Unit itself. And we achieved that. And yes, that triggered some additional refactorings and cleanups and improvements. But at any point, we could have said, OK, enough is enough. We can now release. And that's basically what we did. Um, there's always stuff to do, and there's still stuff to clean up. I mentioned finding tests and running mm -hmm. tests earlier. Those are the next step. But both of those things are not directly related with the event system and therefore are not something that we had planned uh, for doing in PHP Unit 10. For I don't know how long, uh, 15 plus years, I've been wanting to rewrite uh, the way that tests are run. But I realized at some point that I need to incrementally prepare such a step. And I now feel for the first time that I might have reached um, a state of the code base where I can make that um next step maybe i'm right maybe i'm wrong i'll find out at some point during the year uh, ideally we'll have a php unit 11 next year that has a new test runner so that, that's great still that that you have enough uh, ideas and time and energy to work on it still so thanks for taking the time today to talk with us about those it's uh, my topics. pleasure and providing all the insights. Uh, thanks to everyone joining in. And the good news as well, uh, besides Sebastian still up for running PHP Unit as a project, is that PHP Release Radar will be back as well. Uh, our next episode is about something that got released actually today, also in the 10th version, and it's called a, a, a framework called Laravel. And we are um, happy to talk with Taylor Otwell next time on the 8th of March about uh, the release. So thanks again, Sebastian. And um, thanks. 
See you next time. Bye.